Savelma got approved for a second season, which many of us already knew. The show was locked down for two seasons from the get-go. How Mindy Kaling has this much luck is beyond me. Websites began spreading the joyous news with marketing like this. Who wouldn't be excited? Mindy Kaling has given multiple interviews, stating that she doesn't care about the reception of Velma and is in fact likely to double down with season two. The former writer of The Office had grand plans for characters, proclaiming the new lesbian character to be an icon for gay youth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. in advance of the series actually airing. Velma's a gay icon for who under the age of 45? Velma peaked in 1975. And let's face it, even when they did the live action Scooby-Doo movies with Freddie Prince Jr., those films were relevant at the same time as Dark Side Phil being at the peak of his popularity. Think about how long ago that was. In the beginning, God made the sea. And on the seventh day, he made it. Dark Sea Death Hill. Channing Dungey did an interview with Deadline talking about hard funny. And it seems like everything she ever worked on was hardly funny. Ooh. But one part of the article highlights how modern Hollywood is pretty much in a reboot trend with no end in sight. Channing worked on Big Bang Theory and Friends, two horrendously horrible shows, unless you had absolutely no idea what funny was, Ask My Ex-Girlfriend. With broadcast comedies, it's that group of people that you check in with every week to make you feel a little bit better about your world and make you laugh at the end of a long day, said Dungry. When you're dealing with things that are tough, you check into a place like whether it's Friends Couch or Abbott's Elementary Teacher's Lounge and suddenly you feel better, you feel like you're surrounded by people that you know and who make you feel good. shows that feel that like they must be suffering from lobotomies mother of god i would use big bang theory and friends to torture terrorists all right haji where's the dirty bomb uh-oh <laughs> uh-oh Stu, edit that out please you know that we'll get in trouble for anything remotely testosterone fueled My God, if this woman thought Big Bang Theory and Friends were funny, she worked on them. She probably thinks Velma is a laugh a minute. But maybe, just maybe, I'm being biased. Maybe I'm being unfair. Maybe I'm out of touch. No cap. Am I cool with the kids now? So I thought, why not watch the rest of the series, Velma, so you don't have to. By the way, I thought Velma ended weeks ago, and honest to God, it really should have. I hear you're the racist now. I was told by one of my handlers that I need to be more positive in my video's quotation marks. After watching Velma, who wouldn't be more positive, am I right? I left off in episode 5 and began binge watching the last 5 episodes back to back. The best way to describe the show is like a gut punch from a street urchin named Manny the Fanny. As he leads you on a wild goose chase through the streets of San Francisco to find a miracle drug called fentanyl that can make you turn into a falcon at will, or at least that's what you think happened as you passed out on the floor, and a cholo steals your organs. How's that, Stu? Along the way, you make no human connections, and everyone around you is a really horrible human being. Just kidding, Velma's much worse than the streets of San Francisco. <laughs> Each episode plays out like a script, dreamed up by the most agoraphobic Twitter user imaginable. If you ever have trouble sleeping, throw Velma on. It's better than Ambien. I was in a coma for three weeks. My family almost pulled the plug on me till I woke up when they turned the show off. I was fighting off sleep like my grandmother in an old folks home, convinced that the Latin workers were stealing from her. Uh, are you suggesting I am a woman dressed as a man? Because if you are, no tap. <coughs> Very good. Only a true man would know the joy and camaraderie found in the surprise tapping of another man's testicles. Ah. And now to find 
an ambitious, status-conscious young woman who could appreciate what she might achieve as the male president of a global corporation. Oh, you won't, Velma, because not only are you brilliant, who more than you would truly appreciate the advantages of being a handsome, rich, white man? Uh, advantages? You think we like being president of the United States 97% of the time? The job sucks. <laughs> The way characters speak and interact with one another doesn't really make sense because none of them have genuine connections. Who basically taught you to be a beta? Excuse me? My father is not a beta. That's it. We're getting out of here right now, Norval. We need to have a little talk about us. About us? Why? You just saved Velma's life instead of mine. Hey, we're gonna head out. We don't support a small business owned by a woman of color. Who will? snacks, water, and pictures of Tom Holland. Now let's go, Daff. Olive, what are you doing here? And the only answer I'll accept is using your long ass arms to change light bulbs. Today, Olive and I are taking pictures for the sexy calendar we sell to fight discrimination against hot girls. What? This is called meta comedy. Self-referential humor, also known as self-reflection humor, self-aware humor, or meta humor, is a type of comedic expression that either directed towards some other subject or openly directed towards oneself. But what it actually is is poorly strung together jokes about pop culture references and current events made in hopes that the viewer somehow relates to this unrelatable show. No, unacceptable. I mean, jinkies. This show is fan bloody tastic. Acceptable. How is that, Stu? Am I doing better? I love this show. Don't cancel me. No, Fluffy, no! No! No, bad! Bad! No, 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 no! Manny the Fanny? He's overdosed on fentanyl! Don't believe me that this show is great? Watch these clips and see if they don't lift your spirits up and make you feel like you got friends. If you stop rolling, I'll stop trying to sell you on the dark web! Quick, make me laugh like Norville would have! I, I would, but all I can think of right now is the gender pay gap. Is it funny? Women make 20% less than men, and women of color even less? <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Truly really just died without him. Almost died. Still, if I can separate reality dating shows exploitation of women from my obsessive need to watch them, I can separate Gigi from Norville. Velma isn't a bad show. It's a terrible show. Intentionally made derisive. All for the effect of being edgy. Or meta. It takes legacy characters and destroys them for the sake of doing so. The fact shows like these get a pass at all is beyond disbelief. And fan concerns are written off as, they don't get it, is a real poor excuse. If you worked the fries at Wendy's and you decided to take a piss in the basket to be meta, you wouldn't get that 25 cent raise that they dangle over your head like a carrot. They would fire you and press charges on you. You'd never work fast food again or any other job for that matter for years to come. Why is it teenagers in America with part-time jobs are held to a higher standard than Mindy Kaling or Hollywood in general? But this show isn't the issue. It's those terrible man babies on YouTube, echoing how the majority of people feel about it. They're the ones ruining culture, not the unabashed assault on any and everything pop culture in America. That's just equity.